I'm Larry Vickers, the host of TAC TV. I'm a trained firearms professional with years of experience in the industry. On each and every episode, we have safety measures in place, so if you're not properly trained, do not attempt to duplicate anything you see on this show, ever. The 1911. Finally, we have arrived at the centennial episode for this classic American handgun. Now, I've got a long history with this pistol, both from my military service and my gunsmithing time using it. My good friend Ken Hackathorn and I are gonna take you through some classic drills on the range for the 1911, and we're also gonna invite you to a special centennial class in Marietta, Ohio, hosted by Wilson Combat. Stand by because the episode you've been waiting 100 years for is coming at you. We're here at Fort Harmer Rifle Club outside of Marietta, Ohio, close to my good buddy Ken Hackathorn's home. And we're having the 1911 Centennial Celebration here. Wilson Combat has not only sponsored the show, but they've also sponsored the event. So we have about 40 shooters here, and we're gonna take them through some classic 1911 drills, like the El Presidente and whatnot, and revisit some of the things that made the custom 1911 great. One of the things we're trying to do today is this is kind of a celebration of the 1911 pistol. It's been around for a century, you know, this year everybody's making a big deal about it. Uh, it's one of the few tools I can think of that's been in use for a century. Have there been other guns that come along that probably do the job as well or maybe even better? Yeah, but it's still in use. It's used all over the world. Lots of people use it for self-defense. It's used in the competitive shooting arena uh, a great deal. So we've taken a bunch of like-minded people to put them together here for a weekend of what we actually call entertainment. It's not, it's some training, but it's also somewhat entertaining. And the object is for everybody to get together, shoot the 1911, understand a lot of the techniques and the drills that we do are based upon stuff that was developed over the years uh, for the 1911 pistol, which I'll tell you, no matter whether you're shooting a Glock or a Brutter or many of the other handguns on the market today, the techniques or the skills that we now use with all different weapons were all basically formulated originally around the 1911. I bought my first 1911 25 years ago and uh, shot it quite a bit initially and then like, uh, like a lot of us, my hobbies kind of went into watching my kids do their hobbies and kind of got out of shooting and I've just recently kind of gotten back into it. For me, it's, uh, it's really re-immersing into the, the 1911 world. I've shot a Beretta quite a bit in the military, but uh, a Beretta is not a 1911. Now, first off, it's not a gun for an amateur. You have to be a dedicated shooter and want to learn the platform because there's some real nuances to keeping it running. It's a lot less forgiving than some of the, the wonder pistols out there today. It's got to be taken care of. It's got to be fed the right ammunition. But the fact of the matter is when it's used properly and in the hands of a trained professional, it's a deadly weapon. It's a very durable handgun. I know people like my buddy Ken and whatnot who have slides and frames on 1911s with tens of thousands of rounds that would have wore out most pistols. So its durability is legendary. Shootability is famous, if anything, more so than any other handgun, mainly because of the trigger. It has excellent ergonomics in terms of the slide release, magazine release, thumb safety and whatnot, but the trigger can be refined to perfection and it actually becomes a crutch and a curse in the respect it spoils you. And adaptability, not only is it adaptable to combat, which has obviously served in that role for you know many years, and, and some of the most famous incidents with the 1911 go back to World War I or even World War II. But the fact that you can adapt it to different shooting disciplines such as bullseye or competition shooting, beaver tails, modifications, customize it to your taste. You know, we offer several different models, but people still seem to not realize that you know they can get it however they want. Durability, shootability, and adaptability. It brings those three attributes together better than any other handgun in history. Now, remember we talked about trigger reset yesterday. Your goal was to reset the trigger back to the slack point during recoil. 
And all you do, yeah, just relax your trigger finger and the spring tension of the trigger mechanism will kick it right back out to the slack point. One of the things we gotta touch upon is a lot of people don't dial in on the fact that the trigger control is so critical in the 1911. Ken and I are both gonna hit on that in our own little way and kind of emphasize that in a lot of ways, it's kind of been lost in the shuffle versus the emphasis on sight picture, which way it goes way back to Jeff Cooper and whatnot. Remember, if you don't press the trigger straight to the rear, no matter what you do with the sights or grip or standing else, if you don't push the trigger straight to the rear, if you snatch or jerk the trigger, you will shoot a bad shot. So we worked on that this morning and we built on that. Uh, we threw in some other skills. As a matter of fact, we're lucky we've got Bill Wilson here from Wilson Combat. Ken Hackler and I go way back. We've, we've been shooting handguns together since the late 70s. Ken was one of the founders of IPSC and also one of the founders of IDPA. And uh, we've not only been friendly competitors, but very good friends for years and years. Bill is a very accomplished pistol shooter and was one of the top IPSC champions back in the day. And he developed a drill called the Bill Drill. Rob Latham uh, coined the phrase of the Bill Drill. And uh, this drill is seven yards, one target, draw and fire six shots. And uh, with good carry equipment, uh, three seconds is a real good par time for that for an experienced shooter. And it's basically about recovery. It teaches you how, to, when you fire a shot and a gun recoils, how to recover and get back on target and fire a quick follow-up shot. So the people today were very lucky. They got a chance to shoot a legendary skill drill. It's known all over the world, the Bill Drill, and Bill Wilson's the guy that basically talked us to it. I'm Larry Vickers, the host of TAC TV. We're proud to have Wilson Combat on board as a sponsor. And since 1977, they've been getting the job done when it comes to the 1911. Bill Wilson has stayed on top of producing one of the best guns for the money anywhere in the world. Okay, it's time for me to give you a few pointers using my Wilson Combat 1911. Now this is exclusive online content only available to viewers on tac-tv.com. All right, first thing I need to do is break the gun down. Make sure there's no magazine in it. Visually inspect the chamber and now I'm gonna disassemble it. One of the first things we're gonna do here is check headspace. I'm gonna show you how to do this. There's a variety of ways to do it, but I'm gonna show you one of the easiest. So you take a live round, put it in your barrel, and it should be flush or slightly below the length of the barrel hood. Now, another thing you can do is chamber check your ammunition. Let's say before a big match or you take a class, you wanna make sure you visually inspect all your ammunition and it drops in and out of the chamber cleanly. Now remember, once again, I wanna drop a round in. It should be flush or slightly below the top of your barrel hood. If that's the case, then you have proper headspace. All right, now, let's move on over to extractor tension. Here's a little bench check on extractor tension. It's real simple. Take a dummy round or a live round. You slide it up underneath the extractor just like this, just like it's feeding it into the chamber. And it should hold the live round to the breech face like this. Now, if it slides in with very little tension, that's usually a red flag, or what's even a bigger red flag, if you slide in, it drops right out. That means you have no extractor tension. Now, you follow this up on the range with live fire, but this is an initial bench check in order to check your extractor tension. Okay, that's test number two. Number three. Check and see if your ejector is loose. Now, a lot of 1911s have slightly loose ejectors, and frankly, it's not that big of a deal because the ejector's channelized in the slide. And matter of fact, I've even seen one years ago that was so loose it would spin, but the gun still worked because in the slide, remember, it has no place to go. But nevertheless, it shouldn't really be loose. Ideally, it'd be tight, and you take your ejector and your frame to a gunsmith and tell them, hey, you need to properly stake it because it's come loose on me. Now, last but not least, we're gonna talk about the plunger tube, and this is a big one. I'm gonna take off my left-hand side grip here, be right back to you. Okay, plunger tube. Now, this is a biggie, gang, especially if you carry this gun cocked and locked, which is, of course, the rage and has been since Jeff Cooper came onto the scene in the 1970s and earlier with the 1911. 
The plunger tube is this tube on the left-hand side of the gun that's staked onto it, and it houses the plunger spring assembly. The plunger spring assembly does two things. It puts tension on the slide release to keep it from popping up in the middle of a magazine. And the other thing it does, it applies tension for the thumb safety, so you can click it on and off safe. Now here's the big deal. If this thing comes loose and pops out, the rear of the plunger spring assembly can pop over the safety, locking the gun on safe. This could happen in your holster. Let's say if you're a law enforcement officer or whatnot, and you don't know that it happens. When you bring the gun up, you will not be able to get the gun off safe and on the fire. This is a really big deal in a 1911. So anytime you're cleaning your gun, you need to wiggle this plunger tube and it should be rock solid. If you feel any movement in it at all, you need to go to a gunsmith and have them properly stake it. It needs to feel as solid as if it's machined out of the same material as the frame itself. Okay, to review our little bench check here, remember you want to check your head space. Drop a live round in it, it should be flush or slightly below and should fall out of the chamber easily. Also slide it up underneath the extractor for your extractor check. Check and make sure your ejector is not overly loose, if it is you need to tighten it and most importantly on the frame make damn sure that plunger tube stays tight. Last thing you want to have happen is for it to pop out and lock your weapon on safe when you need it the most. What we're doing here right now is we're getting ready to run a group of shooters through the live fire shoot house. And really what we're trying to do is take people with a 1911 pistol that have been working the last couple of days and learning basically fundamental trigger manipulation and some of the other fundamental skills, things like, for example, emergency reload. We're going to put them in a house. And what happens when they get in that environment, even though nobody's shooting back, we see almost everybody's stress level goes up. They basically have targets they got to locate and identify, and we've got shoot and no-shoot target scenarios. What really happens is you're going to see that most people kind of fall apart a little bit. Instead of pressing the trigger, they start snatching or slapping it, so the accuracy suffers. You'll see people who will tell you, oh, I can tell how many shots they fired. When the bullets are flying, nobody can tell how many shots they fired. And even in here with nobody shooting back, you know what's going to happen? They're going to lose track, and all of a sudden they're trying to pull the trigger, and the gun's empty. And then they say, oh, crap, I've got to reload the gun. Hence, we teach the emergency reload. Here's the problem. The bad guys are in there, they're identified by, like we use today, blue bandanas, white bandanas. White's good, blue's bad. Gwen, locate them, and the object is to shoot them with a minimum of exposure. In other words, if you see a target, and what most people do is they see a target and they'll jump into the room, you know, they'll jump in and they want to shoot a duel, stand face to face like they're on a square range, and shoot it out. Well, when you do that in the real world, you're going to be called a casualty. So what we want here is to get people to use tactics where they minimize the exposure. In other words, we call it pieing the corner, and mainly when they pie, they only expose enough of their body and their gun to fire the return shots without giving the bad guy a big target to shoot back at. That's kind of what we're testing and showing. So we tried to take a number of the fundamental skills that we want them to learn shooting the pistol. And really, the shoot house is simply a matter to test them under a little bit of stress, because remember, the only thing that matters in the real world is how you function under stress. When you're calm, cool, collected, relaxed on the range, you're not learning anything. When you're out of your comfort zone is when we find out what you're really about. So this is a kind of a chance to see how people can perform and particularly how well they're going to manipulate the 1911 pistol. Get an opportunity to come to a course like this with Larry Vickers and Ken Hackathorn, and only a fool will pass it up. These are icons in the shooting world, and especially when you go to the 1911. These are these are guys who have used the 1911 platform, you know, in law enforcement, in military operations, in competition. You're a fool if you miss an opportunity like this. The revolution has entered its final evolution. Brought to you by U.S. Palm. When precision matters, when performance is everything, when quality is essential, 
with complete weapon systems, free float rails, and cold hammer forged barrels, Daniel Defense is a leader in small arms manufacturing technology. When the next shot could save your life, I trust Daniel Defense. Okay, let's go back out to North Carolina where Ken Hackathorn is gonna help us break down the all-time classic 1911 skill drill, the El Presidente. We got a little piece of history for you, TAC TV viewers. I got my bro, Ken Hackathorn, and he is gonna take us through the real El Presidente, the drill both Ken and I think is the classic 1911 skill drill. You know, Lara, this drill came from Colonel Jeff Cooper. But Cooper was down in uh, Guatemala in about 1966, training at what was then the Palace Guard, the protection detail for the new Presidente. And when he got done, of course, the guy said, hey, Mr. Cooper, give us a, a, a skill, something to practice, a drill, a course of fire. And he, he and accurately said, look, you gotta practice a lot of things to be good with a pistol. But like any bureaucrats, they wanted one. Yeah, of course. So he basically took this drill and uh, said, here's a good one. It encompasses a lot of good skills and it became known quite by accident as the Il Presidente. And basically the key to it is we're gonna shoot the correct original form, the way Cooper designed it, which by the way, as you know, has been modified and changed a lot. It's often called El Presidente, but it's rarely the real right. thing. Right, it's ba been bastardized dramatically. And, and what it is, remember, it's at 10 meters, that's 33 feet, which is where we're at now. Here, yep. The key point is the targets are placed nine feet, or uh, really three meters apart, edge to edge. Edge to edge, hence the spread. And that's a big factor. Yep. It should be fired from concealment or a duty rig. You start with your back to the target, weapon loaded to capacity. Now Cooper's big thing was, of course, you know, you turn on the signal, drew, engage each target with two rounds each, then did what we now call an ipsic reload. In other words, you dump whatever rounds were left in the gun, reload the pistol, and re-engage two, two, two. So a total of 12 rounds with a reload in the middle. The standard that Cooper set back then was, if you shoot the targets clean in 10 seconds or less, you're good. What I'm gonna suggest we do here is for the viewers to get a chance to see what the real original El Presidente looks like. Why don't we run you through it and see how it shakes out. Got it, brother. Somebody picked the wrong diner. One of the questions I get frequently in my classes is how to properly lubricate and how often to maintain your handgun. That's what we're gonna talk about right now with the 1911. First thing, got one of my favorite lubes of all time here, Militech. Also happens to be a TAC TV sponsor. First thing I do is make sure the weapon's empty, of course, magazine out, visually inspect the chamber. Now I go ahead and run a bead of it around the muzzle right here, where it's gonna interface with the bushing. Now at this point, I'll take it, run it down the back of the slide, down the rails, okay? Ease it forward. Go ahead, put it down here where the Hammer's cock where it's gonna get down in on the sear nose. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I go ahead and lock it to the rear. I wanna get some down in on top of the disconnector. Okay. The most important place to lubricate on this weapon and actually the highest friction spot on the weapon is right on top of the barrel hood. That's why you see these rub marks. Every time there's a round fed into the chamber, it pushes the barrel to the inside top of the slide, and that's why you see those rub marks. So what I do is go ahead and pull it slightly out of battery, about a quarter inch or so, and I take my lube and I lay it across in a bead, just like that. And that lubricates the inside top of the slide where it's gonna rub against the barrel hood. Now, once again, you lock the slide to the rear around the outside of the barrel, down the rails, on top of the disconnector, ease the slide forward, down here where the hammer's cocked, where it interfaces with the sear, 
and then of course on top of the barrel hood. Now what I do is I go ahead, cycle the gun, dry fire it a number of times, and then go ahead and wipe off my excess. What you don't want is when you're firing in a class or on the range, this excessive oil flying in your face or affecting your grip. And here's my theory. Let's say you go attend a two-day class with somebody like me or another instructor. You want to lubricate your gun properly at the beginning of each class day and then right after lunch. And you don't need to worry about cleaning the gun until after the class. Remember, it's more important to keep these guns lubricated than clean. Matter of fact, I've seen them where you've won a thousand rounds or more without cleaning. It's not a problem. My rule of thumb is field strip the gun. That means take the slide off, barrel out, and leave the frame intact and go ahead and field strip and clean the gun about every 500 rounds. If you do that, that's a real good rule of thumb. And if you lubricate it properly, that'll keep the gun running over a long period of time. Now, when you do that, you wanna check and make sure stuff like your sights are tight, your plunger tube's tight. You're looking for any unusual wear or anything that really doesn't look right. If you see something that doesn't look kosher, take it to your local gunsmith, have them check it out. But that's the way I run my 1911. I've done it for many years. I've got a lot of rounds through this handgun, and 1911s in particular, more than any other handgun by far that I've ever shot. And I've always used that as a rule of thumb, and by and large, I've had very good luck. Remember, combine that with good magazines and good ammunition, and the gun will keep running for you. Hey, listen, out of curiosity, what kind of 1911 gear are you gonna use for this? Purpose? All right, you're right. I gotta remember, this is a gun and gear show. You got it. Okay, gun is of course my Wilson Super Grade. One of my newest favorite blasters, my primary training blasters when I do uh, 1911 classes. Wilson Mags, Black Hills 230 grain ball. Holster is a Raven concealment and a Raven concealment double mag pouch. Uh, great kit. Cool. Okay, uh, basically I'm just gonna have you start basically like the, the, yeah, the Secret Service start position, right? Like so. Okay. Okay, Lair, we're gonna try to hang him on a target. That's yep. the goal. I'll try pushing the speed here. Okay. All right, brother, here we go. Stand by. Seven point eight. Seven point eight. That was a pretty good run. Uh, that would have done the job. <laughs> yeah. Seven eight down one. Got to thank my bro Rob Latham for that. All those years I shot with him it just paid off. Yeah, hallelujah. Let's check them out. Most anybody I know would be happy with those. Okay, those three are real nice. One down. Yep. Those are clean. Same deal here. Nice three. Here, one down a little bit, but still in the A. Mm -hmm. Nice, we'll take those, babe. Yeah. Three in the A and then one down. Yeah, so that four. was seven, nine, eight, down one. But that was uh, that was a good run by anybody's standards. And I'm real happy with the hits, even though I was pushing the speed. And you know, Larry, a lot of people don't realize there's a variety of variations of this. For example, there's one, another variation, uh, the Vice Presidente, where you basically on the reload, you turn and put one headshot on each. And I like that one, especially when you incorporate it with a slide lock reload, six shot slide lock reload, one on each head. And the reason being, let's face it, human nature is you kind of put the hammer down on the body shots. You have to slow down after the reload and dial in on the accuracy to get and, the headshots. And one of the key things, and you and I both realize and agree on, is my theory, and the only way I ever use this as a training tool is you shoot the slide lock, you know, yeah. start with six rounds of guns. Because the only way I'm going to be reloading my gun in the real world is if you ran out of ammo. Out of bullet. So you're never going to dump ammo on the ground. You still got guys standing, potentially returning fire. That's really hokey. Not unless you're brain dead. I agree. A couple little tips for you. One, work on a faster draw, faster reload, faster target to target. Don't think you're going to gain time by pulling the trigger faster. That generally doesn't work well. Those turn into bad shots. So try to gain your time or shave some time in between those and not work on actually pulling the trigger fast. That's the mistake most people make. Yep. They think if I shoot the gun faster, I can do this faster. You know, they can, but guess what? The misses the don't get it. Exactly. And in a little off-camera truth there, uh, the 780 drill I had down one is probably the single best El Presidente I've ever shot bar none. By anybody's standards, I I'll live with that. If I never shot this drill again, especially since it was on TV, I'm happy, I'll go to my grave happy. That was a great and an all-time personal best. And, and, and that's from a very humble Larry Vickers. There's not many pistols that have more stories surrounding it than the 1911 in honor of one of the most famous. My buddy Ken Hackathorne has a drill to run me through out on the range. 
right, Ken. I understand you and the crew set some up for me down here. We got a special drill. You know, this is the 100 year anniversary of the 1911. Of course. I picked a little drill for you that is appropriate for this point in time. Cool, brother. I cannot wait to see it. Kind of set up on a historical incident. October the 8th, 1918, Muse Argonne Offensive. A young American corporal by the name of Alvin York was faced with a rather difficult situation. During the offensive, his company overran a German position. They came under heavy fire from the German machine gun emplacement. He and some of his buds circled around. They suffered a lot of casualties, but he got behind the Germans. And in the following action, he managed to kill 28 Germans and ended up capturing 132. He used an 03 Springfield and a 1911 pistol, just like this one. This is an original Colt made and delivered to the U.S. Army in May of 1918. He picked them off. One of the things he said, like back in Tennessee, when he was turkey hunting, he shot them from the back to the front. So the guys in front really never knew they were under fire. Some of the Germans realized he was behind them, what was going on. They turned, six of them charged him, came after him. His rifle went dry and he said in his journal that he drew his 1911 pistol and killed six of them, shooting them from back to rear to save his life. And it was a 1911, not a Luger as depicted in the movie. Gary Cooper, that was movie magic. It was a 1911 45 cool. caliber Colt pistol. And he took down six of them. And what we've got here today, 03 Springfield and this old veteran 1911. We'll put you up in the regular kit and I'm gonna give you a try on this drill. Okay, now what exactly we got here in the steel? Well, we've got six steel targets set up uh, as if these are the six Germans attacking you. You're gonna shoot them from far to close, just the way Alvin York did it. Uh, we're gonna make you do it one-handed because we're pretty confident that's what he did. He was trained, that was the way it was done in that period of time. You're gonna have six targets. You're gonna start with the gun in condition three in the holster. You have to draw, load it, and deal. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna have you start with a rifle at your shoulder and on this buzzer, you're gonna have to try to work the bolt. Of course, you know on the spring coat, it'll lock back on the mm -hmm. That's your signal. You got no more bullets in the rifle and you can't reload the rifle. You're gonna bench it, draw your pistol, and deal. Deal, okay. Condition three, of course. Absolutely. As it would be carried at that time with seven rounds in the gun. Absolutely. Okay, well I gotta do some serious work then. This is the gun used for this drill, right? Absolutely, this is typically what I want you to use. A 1911, a real 1911 with a little sight. Just basically the same kind of gun he would have had to deal with at that time. Remember, they had heavier triggers than we see today. Very small sights. Back when they made guns to win wars and save lives, not to make a buck. Well, if it's cool with you, I have got a 1911 here that my crew positioned for me that I got from our good buddy Justin Baldini at Colt. And Colt has come out with a 100th anniversary 1911. They have le several levels. This is the level three gun. It's kind of similar to Black Army and personally it's my favorite. This is the gun I requested for Justin to send down. And as you can see, it's set up as a pretty accurate rendition between the two guns. And we just test fired it the other day. A pretty cool gun. If you don't mind, let's put the old war horse out to rest and we'll run the new anniversary gun. I think it's time to put it in retirement. We'll try the new gun. Let's just you can kit it up and get you ready to okay, go. Okay, then something's telling me this is not a World War One era belt. Well, the holster's original, mag pouch, everything, but the belt, unfortunately, the original one must have shrank because I don't think you could probably wear something it. Something tells me, just a gut feeling, I am a little bit bigger dude than Alvin York. Yeah, I think that's a good a clue as we call it in police work. All right, so let's go ahead and get it rigged. Yeah. It's okay with you, Ken. I'm gonna go ahead and keep my Rudy project on, even though I know Alvin York did not have any. Yeah, but he was shooting Dutchman, not steel targets. Yeah, so. you're good. Good point. Okay. okay. Condition three. Original World War I holster. Okay. One thing just isn't right here, Larry. We're missing something. But I think I got a good way to fix that. Kind of wondered what that was doing down here. Okay, we're gonna put you in, shall we say, the spirit of things. Strap Ooh, on bro. the Doughboy helmet. Put it on, cinch the chin strap up, okay? I kind of pull it down the front a little bit. There you go. Kind of, right. hey, that's the real you, Larry. That's what, looking pretty good. Oh, man. You know what's gonna happen? You're gonna start at ready gun, rifle right on the target, finger on the trigger, and on the beep, you're gonna try to work the bolt. It won't. The weapon goes down, draw your pistol, charge it. Far to near. Sound like a plan? Okay, Master Sergeant Vickers, you ready to give this a run? I'm ready. Let's try her. Okay, on target and stand by.
Nicely done, Master Sergeant Vickers. Not too bad, eh? I think Corporal Alvin York would have said that was a right, decent run. Yeah, not bad. To be quite honest, it's a lot easier shooting at static steel versus Hun charging at you with fixed bayonets. Yeah, hallelujah. As you know, as a result of this action, uh, Corporal Alvin York was awarded a Congressional Medal of Honor and probably the most popular or famous use of an 1811 in a combat environment that resulted in the Congressional Medal of Honor. Yep, absolutely. He certainly earned it based Every on what I've read. Every bit of it. This, and again, uh, let's be realistic. Sights are hard to see, but for a 19-year-old, they've probably been a little bit crisper. Yeah, and it was very difficult to see, especially down that shadowy lane. Bingo. What was my time? You're timing to be in 12.36. Okay. Pretty I'm impressive. That. You know, out of curiosity, I wonder if we took a modern gun using both hands, more of a modern shooting technique, and try this again if there'd be much difference. Cool. Now, if I can use a different holster. Bingo. And if I can use my Wilson Super Grade. Let's try it. Let's give it a shot. All right, this time you're shooting out of a much quicker holster to draw from. Day of the art in combat pistols with a nice Wilson CQB. And you're going to use the modern technique. In fact, we're going to see just how much value we got out of our tax dollars when the U.S. Army taught you a little bit about shooting a pistol. Well, hopefully, I won't let you or the viewers attack okay. you down. How about that? We're about to find out. Same start position. All right. All right. Remember, we had previous run on the Alvin York drill was 12.36 seconds. Let's okay. see how this one goes. You ready? And stand by. Seven point six. Yeah, I'd say better gun, better sights, better holster. What can you say? Yeah. I know Alvin York would appreciate that. I'd have been proud of that. What's your line for that, Larry? Remember who you're dealing with. There you are. Seven point six. Yeah, I'd say better gun, better sights, better holster. What can you say? Yeah. I know Alvin York would appreciate that. I'd have been proud. 